God says, mm -hmm. oh, because go ahead. of slavery, oh. your body is fit. Okay. Yeah. Your genes are are built to be Give me the, uh, in the best over the next. shape. And that's why the organs are in the best shape. Okay, okay. They want that's that's a good mindset. I just want to give you the scripture that backs up what I, why I said that we're the best at everything, right? Because God created us different. He created 18 nations. When you read the Bible, like I told you, historical book, he created all the nations, but he said, I'm going to choose one people to be stronger than all the other people. So stronger goes into stronger organs, stronger at running. Look, stronger at running. Yeah. You got boxing. You got UFC. You got to think about it. All right. Watch what the Bible says. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So that Latin, everybody on the sign says, everybody on the sign are holy to God, right? That's separate, read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself uh -huh. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So he chose us above all the people of the face of the earth. Because remember, we were little in number in Egypt. But he said, you know what? I'm going to make this people a great multitude. So then when you read, it says, uh, give me Genesis 25. I'm going to show you the opposite. I'm going to show you uh, this, this man right here. In the Bible, he would be called Esau. And Christ, the real Messiah, is Judah. All right? So we're going to, or Jacob. You could call him Jacob. So you got the the uh, the, the nas nation nationality of Jacob and the nationality of Esau. These are descendants of each other. Watch this. Genesis 25, verse 23. 25. Verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So, that, now, if you don't know the history, th this is, uh, let, let's read 23 like you were about to, because you in the spirit. Read. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Who, who, is, the, who, is, the, who is the her? It was Isaac and who? And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Say their names on that. 21. 21. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So we're going to jump to 25. Rebekah and Isaac is the people, right? They're, they are the, 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 the mother and father of the Israelites. Watch what happens. 25. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. So the first nation that came out was red and hairy. So what people today, they go to the beach or they get mad or whatever, they turn red. Look, 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 she knows, she knows. And they're called something in the South, something about their neck. But the Bible calls them red. I didn't call them red. The Bible calls them red, but you know. Let's just, let's just leave it in your head so you can laugh about it. Read. And they called his name Esau. But God doesn't call them whites because white means pure. Your car is white. You know what right. I'm saying? God called them Esau, right? Read. And after that came his brother out, uh -huh. and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Go ahead. And his name was called Jacob. Now, Jacob is the father of those 12 men right there, right? So Jacob had those 12 men. Read. And Isaac was three score years old when she bred them. Uh -huh. That's it. Keep going. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. Ah, so now Esau, now you got to look at those two men right there, right? You got Jacob on that side, which Judah comes from Jacob. And then you got, you got, you got Caesar Borgia who comes from Esau. So those are the two men that are being brought out in Genesis 25. We're reading about them. Which one's red and which one's hairy? We know it's Esau over here on the, on the right hand side to your right. And Jacob was on the left. But let's see what, how we know that it is. The people that live on the earth that conquered us. Watch this. Uh, let's see some of the qualities. Read it again. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Who loves to put buffalo heads on top of the, uh, the, 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 you know, fireplace and deers and all that stuff? That's not us. Now, we do it because we start liking it because they're doing it. But they kill for, for pleasure. Yes. The Bible said the Israelites, we kill for food. You know what I'm saying? So that's why when they came over here, they killed all the oxen off and all the buffaloes, right? They took it from the Native Americans. So now, like I said, when you read the Bible as a historical book, it's starting to make sense. Wow, I know who Esau is, and I know who Jacob is, right? Now watch this, Romans 9, jump to Romans 9, verse 13. Now religion, if you read this verse to any religious person, they're going to get mad at you. Because we just read the history of Esau and Jacob, right? Now we're going to jump to the New Testament, because Christians will be like, oh, we're not under the Old Testament. Bible, is this is a King James Bible. Okay. All right. This this Bible was written uh, was translated from Hebrew and, and Greek to English in uh, in 1611, right? Yep. And it was by 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day. And it was people that ruled Europe, Spain, and Portugal, which were all Black, Latinos, and Native Americans. We were called Moors at that time. 
All right? So that's why we use this book, all right? Read. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Bring it up. As it is written, Jacob, have I love. So God loves Jacob. You see, the, the one that looks like Christ, right? Black, woolly hair, the one you said. That's who God loves, the Native Americans, that you guys are woolly-haired people. Y'all are strong, y'all are mighty, y'all are warriors. God loves y'all, right? Read. But Esau, have I hated. Why does God, you got to think about it, why does God hate a nation of people? Because he's, he's calling Jacob and Esau, but those are the, the, the forefathers of two different nations. All right? Let's get that back in Genesis 25 where it says, uh, two different manner of people. Watch this. And the Lord said, Two nations are in thy womb. So he told Rebecca, he said, like, if you have twins, he said, two nations are in thy womb. Not a million and a million, but just two different forefathers, right? Read. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So they're not identical, right? They're not identical. They're fraternal, right? Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. They got better organs. They got better everything. They're better at sports. They're better singers. They're better at everything. Right? You can stop them from reading for 400 years, and then when you let them read, now they're governors, now they're everything, right? Native Americans, they're, all, they're in the Senate. Native Americans are doing this, this, and that, right? God says we're the strongest. So this will go back to your point, because you had a good point. Because of how they, they, they had us working, because they did that. They grabbed the best Native American with the best female Native American, and they would breed y'all to make more better slaves. So I understand where you're coming from on point. But remember, we read Romans 9. God hates Esau. Let's read why. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Where well, there's going to be a falling away first. It might be 1 uh, Thessalonians 2 and 3, but I think it's 2. Chapter 2. But watch this, sis. So now, religion is being destroyed as we speak. So this is how you're going to know that what we're telling you is not a lie. Because what we're reading verse upon verse. We're teaching you everything the Bible says. I didn't interpret it. I just read you scriptures and I showed you signs. Because that's what happened, because it's a history book. So I showed you the history that God prophesied was going to happen, and then we had books to prove it. But watch what the Bible says. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. Read up. Let no man deceive you by any means. So they were trying to figure out when Christ was going to come back and save us. Because everybody wants to know when Christ is going to come back the second time. So this is the question that's being asked right here. Read. For that day shall not come except... They come a falling away first. He said, the day of salvation doesn't come until there's a falling away first. What is he talking about? Romans 11 and 1. Hold that. Just hold that. Romans 11 and 1. He's going to talk about losing your identity. The Bible says the Israelites were destined to lose their identity. But we're going to read something about Paul. Paul wrote most of the New Testament. Watch what Paul said. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. Uh -huh. I say then, has God cast away his people? Did God put away the Israelites? God forbid. No. For I also am an Israelite. So Paul said, I'm an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham. He went back to Genesis and understood he came from Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. And he went to the book of Exodus and understand he was from the tribe of Benjamin. Right? That's the Jamaicans, the so-called Jamaican West, West Indians. So Paul understood his nationality. Deuteronomy 32 uh, and verse, what is it? 26. Watch this. Now this is the prophecy that was fulfilled. Remember it said there shall be a falling away first. Before Christ come back, the Israelites have to fall away. Watch what they fell away from. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. Bring it out. I said, I would scatter them into corners. So when the black Jews were conquered in 70 AD by Titus and Vespasian, they, they had to flee. They had to leave Jerusalem. And the white man took over it. And that's why they still live there today, calling themselves Jewish. But the, the real Israelites, Native Americans, Y'all had to, y'all were over here, then they conquered y'all. You had the blacks over there in Spain and Europe and all that. They conquered them. They conquered the Aztecs. We got conquered. There was a, there was a falling away first. Watch what it says. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Remember, Paul knew he was an Israelite. So God said, eventually all the Israelites are going to lose their nationality. So today you lost your nationality. Uh, before I learned this, I didn't know I was an Israelite. So God already fulfilled that scripture, right? So that's how we know we're living in the last days. Before, right before Christ cracked that sky, that's what time we're in right now. Go back to 2 Thessalonians. Now I want to get a little bit more of that verse. Watch what it says. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. Let no man deceive you by any means, uh -huh. for that day shall not come except there, be, there come a falling away first. So the Israelites were destined to lose their nationality. That happened. All right, read. And that man of sin... Be revealed. Today in 2021, we're revealing the man of sin. Watch this. 
the son of perdition. He's the son of perdition, read, of hell, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. He exalts himself more than God. He says he is God. And we're going to read it. Can you read it? Oh, that is worship. Go ahead. So that he, as God, he acting like God. Let's get that picture real quick. Him acting like God. Sit it. In the temple of God, you go into churches and you see the fake God showing himself that he is God. He acts like he's God. But you came up here and said he is not. He has woolly hair. So you knew that, that understanding, right? Read. Remember, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, go ahead. I told you these things. So he prophesied, read. And now you know what, what withholdeth, uh -huh. that he might be revealed in his time. So God says, now you know why Christ ain't come back yet. Because in Rome, they were asking, like, when is Christ coming back? I mean, when is he going to come redeem us? But they were like, look, you first got to lose your nationality. Christ said, give me Luke 21, verse 20. He said, he prophesied that Jerusalem was going to be conquered by Titus and Vespasian. Now, that didn't happen until after Christ died. And he already went to his father. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. Bring it out. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies. So when Titus and Vespasian uh, surround uh, Jerusalem, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Uh -huh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So they had to go to, they had to, go to Egypt. Why would Israelites have to go to Egypt and hide in, in the midst of black people if the Israelites weren't black? You can't hide from, from white, uh, right, right, Ro white right. Romans if you're white and you jump into Africa. That don't make, that's like, uh, who is it? The Wild Thornberries? I used to watch that thing when I was a little kid. But just imagine him going to Africa trying to hide from somebody. He's white. He had a little a red hair, big mustache. You can't hide in the midst of Africans if you're white. Well, all right? Tarzan. Tarzan. There you go. There you go. Tarzan is another good example. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Uh -huh. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance. So God prophesied that when Jerusalem gets destroyed, right? These are the days of vengeance. Read. That all things which are written must come, may be fulfilled. So everything that's written in Deuteronomy. Remember, we just read Deuteronomy. It said they're going to lose their nationality. Then Thessalonians said that there's going to be a falling away first. So read that part about fulfilled. For these be the days of vengeance, Go ahead. that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So in the New Testament, he's prophesying that we have to lose our nationality before Christ come back. The Israelites didn't lose their nationality in any of the chapters that we read. In the Roman captivity, in Persian and, and Babylon, they didn't lose their nationality. So we lost our nationality in 1492 and 1500s, 1600s. We started being called Negroes, colored, you know, Indian. You know, uh, wetback, all the names that they gave us, but they took, they stripped us from our nationality. But going back to the main point, we out here, we're, we're Israel united in Christ, and we're not out here to, uh, to uh, start any fighting or anything like that, hate. We want to teach our people their nationality, how to get out of captivity, how to keep them laws, but also how to help one another. And one thing that we don't do is like, you, like what you're doing with the shirt thing. If, if we were all of one mind and one spirit, everybody would be out looking for her. Every single body. Right. But because we lost the love. Give me that real quick. The love of uh, Leviticus 19. Real quick. What's the one about love the love of thy neighbor? Uh, it's another one. We lost the love of neighbors. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 19, yeah, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. God says don't hate your brother. Don't hate the people, the Native Americans, the Aztecs, the Mayans, because those are the children of thy people. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You're going to rebuke your neighbor. So if you see the person selling weed to another person, you're going to rebuke them. You're not going to let weed be in your neighborhood. You're not going to let a uh, homeboy try to hoe out that sister right there. No, everybody needs to push marriage in the community. Everybody needs to push righteousness. But because we don't. That's why stuff like that happens, because we don't check ourselves, right? Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Kidnapping is a sin. Right. So, because we just read it. Go back to it real quick. Deuteronomy 24, verse 7. Um, kidnapping is a sin, and God says there's a judgment for that. So we understand that. We understand, but we do pray, and we will have it on our website. We will have it uh, on a video. If you, if you log on, if you uh, subscribe to IUIC Raleigh, 
when this video comes out, we're going to definitely put her on there. You're going to see. And like I said, we about our people. We about saving our people. Right. Physically and spiritually. All right, read. Deuteronomy 24, verse 7. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren right. of the children of Israel and maketh merchandise of him right. or selleth him, then the thief shall die. So that, that's the judgment. In the Old Testament, that was the judgment. If we saw somebody stealing somebody, they would get caught and they would get stoned to death. Right. That we we need that we should have that in the community, but now Christ gave us grace, right? He gave us like, let's say somebody's kidnapping a sister, we catch him. Now we, you know, we're gonna correct him sharply, and then we hope he repents. We're gonna keep an eye on him. And we the whole city, the whole he can't go nowhere. He can't go to food line, he can't go nowhere without us knowing. And he has a report that he is a thief, right? And he's trying to steal people. And we're gonna be watching him as a people. But we don't have that no more. And if we caught him, remember again, if we caught him stealing, he would be put to death. But now that we have Christ, it says we ha he has repentance or she has repentance. Because women kidnap women too. Women can, uh, I be seeing it on TV where women, they act like they're doing something. And then they, they talking to a sister and then somebody comes in a van and pushes the sister in. So women and men, we got to learn to govern each other. We got to learn to love one another. That's what we're reading about right here. Read it again. And, I'll let you and if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel uh -huh. and maketh merchandise of him uh -huh. or selleth him, then the thief shall die and thou shalt put away evil from among you. So the put away evil from among you, that's very key because a lot of people don't break that down in religion. If you kill everybody that's selling drugs, if you're just killing them, guess what? People are not going to want to sell drugs. You, you're going to put away evil from your community. But Christ said, you know what? Yeah, stoning, stoning people and stuff like that and animal sacrifice ain't working. So you know what? I'm going to die one time. And if they reject me, when I come back, I'm going to make them suffer forever. I'm going to make them be on fire forever. And he said, I'm going to destroy their spirit. Because that's why the New Testament says, don't be scared of a man that can kill you physically, but be scared of a man that can kill you in hell, uh, kill your spirit in hell. That's in Matthew 10. But that's what our people, our people don't fear God. Right. They only fear the eyes of men. Oh, did that guy see me kidnap her? Bring it out. You know what I'm saying? But if you thought God would kill you if you stole, if you kidnapped somebody, you wouldn't touch that sister. You wouldn't touch that man, right? You wouldn't kidnap them. So our people lost the fear of God. And that's what that's what we're trying to come out here and bring out. We're trying to teach our people how to fear God so that that stuff won't happen. Right. So drugs in our neighborhood won't happen. So baby right. mama drama don't happen. Right. We used to scream black power while heroin was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.